If you ain't killing, you're dying. I don't know why it's so taboo to talk about death, at least. What happens before death, be it dying or getting killed. Either way, you end up in the same place. Dead. <laughs> I don't know why it's so taboo. The world is abound with cultures, with nations, with people who only seek to sustain themselves and survive. Inevitably, sustaining oneself means confronting Confronting an opposing view. Someone who is not ourselves. And if you are no good at social interaction, you're going to view that as stepping on toes. Crossing other people's territory. Imposing or invading or colonizing, if you will. I don't know why it's so taboo to talk about colonizing, especially the colonizing that occurs in a non-violent manner. That's a good thing, isn't it? If hands get shaken and culture gets exchanged, Mutually, at least. And then both or all parties benefit mutually. I'm not sure why it's so taboo to shake hands. It's so easy to squeeze the trigger. The tough part is having to live with it. <laughs> Uh, it's so easy to point out differences. It's so easy. I don't know why it's so taboo to come up with solutions. I'm not sure why it's so taboo to build bridges. Especially between tribes, between groups of people. Like there has to be two sides, right? Like you have to reach across the aisle to work with the opposition. I don't think it should be like that. If you're not good, you're evil, right? But defining good and evil, again, that comes back to uh, what you're looking forward to sustaining. What you're looking forward to carrying forward. Is it good or bad for everyone else? What's good for one individual might be evil for another individual. Why is it so taboo to, to find common ground and build on that? Why is it so taboo to be diplomatic? Like those, uh, like those individuals that we were warned not to make friends with. I'm not talking about those who have actual mental illness. Because they're identifiable. They're easily identifiable, I think. And then you don't have to associate with them. 
I'm talking about those who have differing views. You know why it's so taboo? Because it requires you to take the initiative. It requires you to reach out. It requires you to not be afraid to jump in, guns blazing. You are the corporate cowboy. Can't be afraid. Just got to reach out. Shake somebody's hand. Introduce yourself. Be wary of who they are, what they represent. Understand that you're the one who reached out. You asked for this. They, in a way, also asked for it. Just being there. Can't be present and not be playing the game. Everybody's playing the fucking game. Nobody's winning, nobody's losing. Everybody dies in the end. That's right. They fucking asked for it. Why else would they put themselves in a position to be walked up on? To be introduced to? I guess those are life lessons that are hard to come by in the household. They're hard to come by in school. You only learn them through business. I suppose there are aspects of business at home and in school and in the workplace, but very few are able to identify them and pick them out and recognize, understand what it means to develop oneself and be a professional. Shit, when I was younger, I thought a professional, I truly believed a professional wore a suit every day. I equated professionalism to work and work to business and business attire. So a suit and a tie is the first thing that popped into my mind when I heard professional. That isn't necessarily the case. One could be a professional on the street, a professional thug, if you will. It all depends on how you carry yourself. It all depends on how others perceive you, on how you wish to be perceived. You don't have to be, how do I say this? You don't have to be, <laughs> how, do, how, do I, how do I explain this? You don't have to look a certain way be a certain way, act a certain way. You just have to be attractive. If that makes any sense. You don't have to look attractive. You don't have to look good. You just have to be inviting, be attractive. And in that way, when you extend your hand, somebody else meets you halfway. You aren't necessarily intruding into their space. You're just inviting them to shake hands. I guess it does have to do a little bit with your aura, with the energy, with the vibes that you give off. And yeah, you do have to look presentable. Anyone can be a professional, but they still have to appear presentable. 
So you got to be, you have to be clean. You have to be dressed, groomed, somewhat taken care of, put together. So that folks aren't, I'm going to say intimidated. So folks aren't intimidated or folks aren't cautious about associating with you and shaking your hand. I guess you're doing them a favor. You could look at it that way. You're doing them a favor. You do all things right. You shake their hand. They have a new associate. I mean, as do you. It goes both ways, remember? So they also have to know and understand their position in this world. What it means to be your associate. And how they carry themselves because you you aren't just shaking everybody's hand. When you're speaking with somebody, when you're introducing yourself, when you're prospecting an associate, you're looking for certain characteristics, certain personality types, certain abilities. I guess if I were to break it down into... uh, an extremely simple example, an extremely simple analogy. If I'm looking for an accountant, I'm not just going to go to a a school, like a college, and pull just anyone out of an accounting class. You know, if I want a strong associate, if I want a very capable associate, It does go by rank because that will determine compensation at the end of the day. If I want someone who is, if I'm looking for someone who is slightly inexperienced, who can be trained, and I have the time and the resources to train an individual, then yeah, I might start with someone who's slightly less educated, who's new to the field still knows how to keep books and is an accountant might have minimal experience is is aware of what a general ledger is <laughs> that sort of thing or I could find somebody in the middle ground who's got who's a little further along their education, who actually works in the field. I could go to the far end, look for somebody who's very educated, has already got a certificate, might be a CPA even. He's got five, ten plus years of experience. And that all determines how much they're looking to get paid. Even then, I'm not just going to go for the for the top of the top, what some folks might call the cream of the crop, just because they place a high score, just because they had a high, the highest grade in their class, or the lowest grade in their class even. I mean, you still want to interview folks. You still want to look at the goods, assess, assess the goods, assess the product, assess the service that you'll be buying from said individual. And that's going to be the person. That's going to be the whole package. How they carry themselves. How they talk. How they walk. There are some individuals who can make it work with just about anybody. But again, there is a very slim margin of uh, folks with mental illnesses, psychopaths and whatnot. I keep coming back to that. I I don't harp on it, but I do come back to that as as a precautionary measure because 
They could be anybody. Don't be fooled. I mean, looks can be deceiving. But your assessment, your evaluation of a person is never over. Never over. That's why you don't want to put your utmost trust in just one person. Who was it, I think, was Tupac who said, trust no one. <laughs> He's very right. He's very right. You can only trust somebody about as far as you can throw them. And you can throw some people pretty far. But just know that if you throw somebody and they have the ability to get up, well, what would you do if you were thrown? Right? And then there are others who, again, might have psychopathic tendencies who, when they get thrown, something or nothing breaks or snaps. You have to continuously gauge people Continuously. You have to be on your toes always. And this shit is tiring. This shit's exhausting. You get home tired at the end of the day. You put your head down on your pillow. And you're out within five minutes. There are some nights you stay up. Still thinking. Still gauging. Those shower thoughts weren't enough. What can you do better? What can, how can you move in a more righteous manner? It all counts. It all matters. Some folks say none of it matters. But even that matters. The fact that they don't. <laughs> even they got their place. Even... They fit a role. Visit us on Instagram. It's the Corporate Cowboys page. Subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already. It's Corporate Cowboys Podcast. And you can uh, shoot us a donation using one of the links. You can find it. You're smart. Have a nice week. Have a nice Monday. July 12, 2021. My name is Alex.